Hello, welcome to the lecture on hemoptysis. Hemoptysis is the coughing up of either blood tinged sputum or grossly bloody sputum. Now, most patients that are presenting to primary care will present with blood tinged sputum, but they'll usually be concerned because they'll think about uh, TB or maybe even cancer. Although the most likely cause of hemoptysis is not related to any serious pulmonary or systemic disease, we do have to have these interdifferential diagnoses and they must be considered. Hemoptysis can have many causes, including infection, cardiovascular disease, cancer, and vasculitis. The amount of blood is the major determinant of morbidity. Now, massive hemoptysis uh, is defined as more than 100 milliliters uh, in 24 hours, and of course, that's considered to be a medical emergency. In research studies, the most common causes of hemoptysis uh, was acute and chronic bronchitis, and that was about 26%. Lung cancer accounted for 23%, pneumonia 10%, and TB 8%. If the patient's not from the U.S., then TB should probably be one of your first considerations. Bronchitis uh, usually causes a mild hemoptysis, and that's due to mucosal inflammation. Lung cancer also causes a mild hemoptysis. Now, lung cancer rarely causes any type of massive hemoptysis unless there is a malignant invasion of some central pulmonary vessel. Hemoptysis and TB can be caused by several mechanisms. It can also be caused by chronically elevated pulmonary venous pressure. So mitral stenosis should be considered. Of course, many infections may cause hemoptysis as well as other systemic disorders. In primary care, the nasal mucosa and oral pharynx are more often the source of blood tinged sputum than the lower respiratory tract. If a patient is otherwise healthy, especially if the blood tinged sputum happens in the winter, the upper respiratory system should be checked for bleeding. If no source of bleeding can be found in the upper respiratory tract, then more concern is warranted. For subjective data, you want to ask about previous history of smoking, or occupational exposures, any bleeding disorder, hematuria, pleuritic chest pain, heart murmurs, those kinds of things, heart failure, use of anticoagulants. Again, we need to think about a family history of hemoptysis. And we usually define hemoptysis as bright red blood that's frothy, has an alkaline pH, and it's usually mixed with sputum containing macrophages and white blood cells. When the patient presents with bloody sputum, it's very important to determine first the amount of hemoptysis and to differentiate between minor and massive hemoptysis. It's also important to determine if the blood is coming from the lungs. Blood from the lungs is usually bright red and frothy, has an alkaline pH, and is usually mixed with sputum. Patients should be asked about episodes of severe childhood pneumonia, recurrent pneumonia, chronic cough, and sputum production which are important clues to bronchiectasis. Blood streaking or gross blood in purulent sputum suggests pneumonia or possible lung abscess. Dyspnea and pleuritic chest pain may suggest pulmonary infarct or embolism. Age is also important to consider. Lung cancer rarely occurs in patients under the age of 40. Inquire about previous history of smoking, high-risk occupations, recent or ongoing respiratory problems in addition to the other subjective information that we discussed. It's important to recognize the risk related to cancer and TB when evaluating hemoptysis. The patients at higher risk of cancer include older males with a history of smoking or asbestos exposure. TB should also be evaluated according to risk. Older patients may present with a reactivation of infection. Younger patients may present with a new infection. Patients with HIV are also at a higher risk for severe pulmonary problems, in addition to being at increased risk for TB. The characteristics of sputum, in addition to amount, can also help determine the diagnosis. With a pink sputum, we usually think of pulmonary edema. If it's very putrid, we may think of a lung abscess. A current jelly, we may think of a pneumonia. Uh, copious amounts of blood tinged as well as purulent sputum, we may think bronchiectasis. Vital signs should be checked for any signs of fever, increased respiratory rate, 
The ear, nose, and throat should be evaluated as sources of upper respiratory bleeding. And again, this is going to be the most common thing that you'll see. The skin should be assessed. Uh, clubbing may be associated with neoplasm, lung abscess, bronchoectasis, or other serious pulmonary disorders. A lymph node enlargement of the cervical, supraclavicular, axillary nodes may suggest TB or malignancy. A very thorough cardiovascular exam should be performed. We're, here we're looking for uh, S3 gallops, uh, cardiac murmurs, or JVD. And these findings may suggest heart failure or severe mitral disease. Examination of the chest should also include inspection, palpation, and auscultation. RELs may indicate pneumonia or aspirated blood. And localized wheezes uh, may suggest a tumor. So lots of differential diagnosis and lots of things to rule out. When it comes to diagnostics, uh, people with hemoptysis who do not have bleeding in the upper respiratory system. So if you look and you can't determine a site, you need to evaluate them with a chest x-ray. The x-ray may reveal cancer, abscess, infiltrate, uh, hyalur adenopathy, signs of congestive failure, or mitral stenosis. A lab should evaluate a complete uh, blood cell count. You're looking for platelet abnormalities. You also need to look at prolonged bleeding times. Uh, you want to do a urinalysis uh, to make sure that you don't have some type of pulmonary renal syndrome. Again, sputum is important for ruling out TB as well as cancer. A chest CT can help define a lesion noted on x-ray, and we usually will do a chest CT before we do a bronchoscopy. The bronchoscopy is reserved for patients with abnormal chest x-ray, a positive sputum, or those patients with large amounts of bleeding. Again, we don't want to forget to do the TB skin test. Uh, indications for referral are going to include all patients with hemoptysis that you believe to be at, in risk for, at risk for malignancy or other disorders. So if there's not an upper respiratory infection currently going on or you can't find a source, um, then you need to do further diagnostics and again consider referral.